your Bibles tonight, turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 24. Isaiah, chapter 24. It is good to have my wife back with me this evening. Good to at least erase the most common accusation of today. And, uh, you know, you get in a car accident, it was COVID. And uh, so it's not. And uh, so glad for that. I told her this afternoon, I said, there's two things, two tests people wait anxiously over these days. One is a pregnancy test and the other is a COVID test. And it just seems, I don't know, it just seems weird. But I guess you got to do it to make sure everybody's okay. And uh, But uh, she's good. Amen? I'm glad. I'm glad she's good. I am. All right. Do pray for uh, Jimmy Don Diane. I uh, sent him a text this afternoon. Asked if he was feeling better, and he said not much. So I think they are going to try to get into the doctor tomorrow and uh, pr- just pray for them, amen, that they'll get to feeling better as well and get all of our home folk back. All right, enough of that. I am not going to keep you long tonight at all. Every time I say that, we're here right till 7, right? But chapter 24, Isaiah. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, so with the maid, so with his mis- her mistress, mi- mistress, sorry, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled, for the Lord hath spoken this word. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth is also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the the everlasting covenant. I just want to pause there for a minute. Change the ordinance. Folks, we do not have any right under any circumstances to change this. Never, ever, ever. I don't know about you, but I'm a King James guy. And there are some out there that would argue that this King James Bible isn't exactly as it was, but it's the closest thing we've got. And I believe it is preserved preserved. The King James Bible is the preserved Word of God for this day and time. We don't have a right to change it. Verse 5 again, the earth also defiled under the inhabitants there because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. And we can continue reading, 
The word earth or earth is mentioned 12 times throughout the scripture, if I counted right, or at least throughout this, <coughs> excuse me, throughout this chapter. The term world is mentioned once, so 13 times the earth and the world are mentioned. Now, in a little bit of Bible study, and we'll have a word of prayer here in just a minute, but a little bit of study, Isaiah changes gears here, and we look now into what is both historically accurate, as Jerusalem and Judah has been under attack many times, defeated many times, and many will say that this is in reference to Judah. As a matter of fact, when I started reading different commentaries, all they mentioned was, this is Judah under attack. Well, Judah is not the whole earth. So, yes, it is in reference to Judah, because I believe if you, if you read through here and read it very carefully, read the whole chapter, he mentions the land. I believe the land is the nation of Israel, is Judah. But he references the earth. So we're not just talking about a destruction of Judah. As a matter of fact, if you read this chapter very carefully, there is coming a time when this earth will be turned upside down, inside out, right side in, destroyed. And in one of the verses we read, it says, Few men will be left. Few. Few. And if we read a little further down in this chapter, we won't take the time tonight for, the, for the, the sake of the text, or the context anyway, that I'm going to be dealing with tonight, you'll see that there are a few inhabitants that do praise the Lord during this time. But if I understand the chapter correctly, and it, it doesn't take you know more than a sixth grade knowledge of English to understand in the first verse, it says, Behold the Lord. So the Lord is going to remodel this earth and its inhabitants. It's going to happen. It's not a matter of if, but a matter of when. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here tonight. Lord, I need you to help me. Lord, thank you for your Son, your salvation, your Holy Spirit. Lord, fill me with your Spirit now tonight. Preach one more time. Cleanse me of sin and self. Speak through me. Use me now, Lord. In spite of my faults, Lord, now in Jesus' name, amen. Not a matter of if matter of when. I would present to you tonight that time is of the essence. Time is running out. We don't know when this event is going to happen. I believe it's If it's midnight, like the old song says, could be 11.59 right now. We could be just minutes away. It could happen tonight. There's nothing to keep the Lord from coming back. Nothing. Nothing needs to happen. I was reading some quotes, some of my favorite quotes from some of my favorite people, let's put it that way, in regards to time. In times like these, it helps to recall that there have always been times like these. Paul Harvey. I like Paul Harvey. Some people have their favorite philosophers. One of mine is Paul Harvey. <clears throat> You may delay, but time will not. Benjamin Franklin. 
Time and money spent in helping men to do more for themselves is far better than mere giving. Henry Ford. Probably one of my favorites, though, says this. In times like these, you need a Savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. George Beverly Shea. I would present to you tonight that the events here in Isaiah chapter 24 is only a matter of time. What would you do if you knew you had only one day left to live? What would you do if you went to the doctor tomorrow and he said, one year? One year, what would you do? Time is of the essence. If you only had a matter of minutes, let me give you something to think about. What would your last words be? What's the last thing you'd say? Did you ever stop to think about that? Some might say, well, it depends upon who's next to me. I mean, if my wife were sitting next to me, I might say, I love you. Right? What would your dying breath be? The time is of the essence. I would present to you tonight, we're running out of time. There's going to come a day when the trumpet's going to sound, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then those that remain, whom that are saved, will be caught up to meet him in the air. And then there'll be a time of tribulation. And then I believe that the events that we're talking about is the Lord's second coming to this earth. He will rearrange this earth. And I'm going to tell you, when he comes back down to this earth, there's not going to be many people left by the time all this mess is over with. If I would present to you tonight, time's running out. Time is of the essence. Number one, time is running out for redeeming the day. Today. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. I would tell you that time runs out. I, Charlotte will tell you this, every night, every Sunday night, on my way home, I get a look on my face. Somewhere around 9, 10 o'clock, there's this look on my face and it just goes, Ugh. because the day after Sunday is Monday. Now some of y'all, that don't mean nothing. But if you've had the week I had last week, I ain't looking forward to Monday. Because a lot of what happened last week is now carrying over into Monday. I really like Sundays. But even Sundays come to an end. And as I look out here, I see some empty pews. I mean, we say this almost every Sunday. Empty pews. It makes me think that some people didn't put their Sunday to very good use. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Redeeming the time, making good 
sense and good priority of the time that you're given today. We joke about it all the time. You know, why, why do today that which you can put off to tomorrow? Or why put off to tomorrow when you can do it today? However you want to look at it. But the reality is, is too often times we waste the days away. Folks, every day that goes by is a day closer to us hearing that trumpet sound. And that is a good thing. But every day that goes by, somebody slipped over the edge into hell. The Bible says in James chapter 4, <clears throat> verse 13, Go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow we will go into such a city. Continue there a year, buy, sell, get gain, whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. But what is your life? What is your life? Even, it is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. Your life is but a vapor. I wonder, I'm not trying to be more, but I just want you to think tonight. I wonder how many of us sitting in this auditorium are still going to be alive come January 1st. You say, Brother Mark, you shouldn't talk like that. No, there were two sweet older people that used to sit right back there on that back row last year we thought would never leave. And January 1st this year, they weren't here. Life is but a vapor. And if I remember right, just months before he passed away, he was playing softball. About a year or so. I mean, maybe a little bit, two years Okay, look, I mean, the point is, he was playing softball and then one, and active, and then next thing you know, he's on a cane, and next thing you know, he's not here. Life is but a vapor. Y'all are looking at me like, Mark, this is not one of those messages we like to aim into. I know. Life is but a vapor. That's why it's so important that we redeem the time that we have. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 through 8 you know it to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven time to be born time to die time to plant time to pluck up that which is planted time to kill time to heal time to break down time to build up time to weep time to laugh time to mourn time to dance time to cast away stones and he goes on and on and on and on Time for everything. Folks, time doesn't stop. Time does not stop, and that is why it is so important that every morning we open our eyes and take a breath that we redeem the time wisely. On a daily basis. Time is running out to redeem the day. Number two. Time is running out for the lost. Oh, if, if there is of all the points here tonight, the one that needs to be heard, time is running out for the lost. You can only scoff and turn your back on God so long. Time is running out. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. For he saith, I have heard thee, in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. I'm telling you, time's running out. There's no time to wait till tomorrow to get saved. There's no time to wait and hope and think that you might make it home. You might not. Time. It's running out. 
for the loss. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 99. I don't think that's right, 99. I think it's 9. Too many hits of the button, sorry. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. James 5, verse 20, Let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death. There's a reason why I put that in there. Time's running out for the sinner. That's why time is of the essence for us to be busy about the Lord's business. I wish I could tell you. I know there's always this talk that before Jesus come, going to come back, it's going to be great revival and pews are going to be filled. I feel like we've already seen it. I just think we're down to coming back. I'd like to be encouraged and say that these pews are going to be full. I hope so. I'm going to try. I'm not going to quit. But I got to tell you, show me a church. I saw something on, I don't know, social media this week. said something about you show me a church that preaches the gospel and I'll show you an empty pew. And I read that, and I looked at it, and I thought, ooh, there's a lot of truth to that, though. Because people don't want to hear truth. They really don't want to hear truth. They, they want to hear fluffed up, feel-good stuff. Well, don't we all? I want to hear fluffed up, feel-good stuff. Always. Time is running out. It's running out for the lost. Well, time is running out on a daily basis. Time is running out for the lost. Time is just running out for this world. I don't know. We were talking a little bit about this today. I'll be very clear. I don't, I don't believe that this vaccine is the mark of the beast. I don't believe it is. Uh, I don't know what the mark of the beast is. I just know I ain't going to be here. So if some of y'all get it, let me know how that turns out for you. I don't know. I don't know what it is. There's a guy out there pushing this mess. Now, I've... I mean, I don't know. We use microchips on dogs. I've seen a microchip on a dog. It sits on the end of a needle. Like a needle, a shot needle. They grab the skin, they pull it up, stick it until that dog pulled back, and that dog's microchipped. That, dog, that microchip's got more information on I can put as much information on that microchip as you have on your cell phone right now. That microchip will sit underneath. They could pinch your skin right now. Matter of fact, there are businesses doing it right now. And I forget, I think it's a business up in Michigan that now they use microchips and they're microchipping their hands. And they come in, that's how they clock in for work. how payroll, everything, all of their records, they get paid, everything, just on their hand. So if you don't have a microchip, you don't work at that company. By the way, the process of microchipping people, they can have an entire school system microchipped within a month. It's that easy. It's a shot. So here's all I'm trying to say. There doesn't need to be anything put in place. The system that our police department uses and police departments are using all over the country 
when I heard it, it was a new system that went in at Corsicana here about two years ago. You want to know what it's called? One World Order. means your records, your ID, everything is on that computer and linked to every major computer system around the United States and parts of the world. So when they run your ID here in Texas, they're running you on a one world order system. The one world order system is designed to be just that in days to come, one world order. If you watch the news, I'm chasing a few rabbits here, but not really. President Joe Biden is presented now tax, as far as trade goes, taxing trade and trying to put into law a one world tax system in regard to trading. He's trying to get it on the table now. Why am I saying that? There is a one world system coming. And it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And I know it's coming because I read the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation tells me there's a one world system. Time is running out for the world as we know it today. It will come into play. And there's a lot of people going through life today and they're afraid and they're walking in fear. But listen to me. If you're a Christian and you start to hear this stuff, just start jumping. Y'all ever get in elevators and jump? Come on, you do it. You, you, yeah, you don't know what fun you're missing. You jump up as the elevator's going down and you jump up and fall down a couple inches. And Okay, y'all don't. <laughs> Some of y'all look at me going, no. <laughs> Plus, you look really weird on that camera that the guy's watching down at the front desk of you in the elevator. Okay, enough. Matthew chapter 24, verse 24, verse 3. Now watch, the disciples ask him a question. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? What things? What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Even in Jesus' day, the disciples asked when the end of the world would be. Luke chapter 21 25 and 26, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and the stars upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Folks, time is running out for this world. It's running out. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Time's running out. So time is running out for us to redeem the day. Time is running out for the lost. Time is running out for this world. Now, now listen to when I say this. Time is running for the Christian. See, if you're saved, time never runs out. And that's good news. If you're saved, we have eternity to look forward to. Now, time, listen, don't misunderstand me. Time is running out. We need to redeem the time that we have together. We need to redeem the time on this earth. We need to be busy about the Father's business. But what a great thing it is to know that time doesn't run out for us. We're, we're just passing through. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. 
Mark chapter 13, verse 32. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Nobody knows the hour. Nobody knows the exact time. Not the exact minute. Not the exact second. But we do get a little glimpse in Scripture of, oh, I don't know. Maybe the years, years, years. And if you follow and if you watch, by the way the Bible tells us to watch the signs, to watch what's going on, to pay attention to Israel, to pay attention to what's going on in the world. And if we'll just pay attention, you can see it coming. You can see that clock just moving. But time's running out. Time's running out. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 10 that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth and even in him time is going to run out and when that final clock ticks God's going to gather us all up going to gather us all up Jeremiah 29 11 for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, and not of evil, to give you an expected end. You know what that means? It means the time as we know it here is going to come to an end. There is an end. What does the Bible say? Heaven and earth shall fade away, pass away, but the word of God will last forever. Things that are spiritual will last forever. Things of this earth coming to an end. Time's running out. 2 Peter 3, 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. I'm not even going to try to interpret that and try to do time and say, well, you mean one day in heaven is a thousand years here on earth, or is a thousand years in heaven like a day on earth? I'm not even going to try to interpret that for you because I, I think what we try to get out of that is this. Our time is not God's time. Not God's time. In God's time. I do know this. Somewhere, and I think I heard Dad say this, there's a calendar in heaven. I don't know what God's calendar says, but he got it circled. What if tomorrow was that day circled on God's calendar? What if tonight was the day circled? We're running out of time. Time is of the essence. I wanted to end it on a good note. Don't don't some of y'all look at me like, oh, this is almost this is a depressing message. I've learned this. When messages like this are preached, it's depressing if you're not saved. If you're saved, just jump a little. Some of y'all really got to get in an elevator and jump. I'm just telling you. You, just, you don't know what you're missing. Time. Time is of the essence. We're running out of time. Every day, we need to redeem the day. Redeem the day. We ought to be the best we can be for Christ. Every day. Every day. Time's running out for this world. I, we can see it changing. Turning on the news depresses me, but I'm telling you, just turn, just listen. Just, just, just listen sometimes to what's going on. Folks, they're just not talking about a national health care system. COVID is a worldwide event. One of the things you need to look at this, and one of the whole things that with the whole vaccine thing, is it's a worldwide system. It don't bother me. Because the closer that gets to a worldwide system, that tells me that clock is just running. Time's almost up for this world. Time's running out for the lost. Or if you're not saved, get saved. You need to accept Christ. Let me tell you something. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. The thief on the cross, he wasn't guaranteed tomorrow. 
Did you ever stop to think about that? He knew he was going to die. He got it right. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. But praise God, time just runs for us Christians. But time here is running short. Time hereafter is an eternity with Christ. Praise God for that. Time. Time is of the essence. Stand to your feet tonight. Heads bowed.